Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is March the 4th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. There was a fight that took place recently that people who like to analyze fights and predict future fights need to take a closer look at. It was at welterweight, it was Mikey Garcia, multiple division champion versus Jesse Vargas, who himself has won multiple titles. So you have two experienced fighters. You have a size gap. Jesse Vargas is much bigger than Mikey Garcia. Right? That size gap could work two ways. Right? It could give the bigger man an advantage in some areas. It could give the smaller man an advantage in some areas. We'll revisit that. You also had the psychological impact of Mikey Garcia coming off his first career loss. A loss in which arguably he was shut out. In other words, both fighters in the ring knew with something like four rounds left in that Mikey Garcia Errol Spence fight that Garcia needed to do something big get a stoppage get multiple knockdowns for the fight to even be competitive it was an uncompetitive fight and in that fight Errol Spence was much bigger than Mikey Garcia right so going into this Jesse Vargas fight there was a question on whether Mikey Garcia could handle a bigger welterweight, right? Whether Mikey Garcia, quite frankly, belonged in the welterweight division. Now, what I want people to do is to throw out the scoring, unless you agree with it, right? Two of the judges had the fight 116-111. That's a farce. In my opinion, you cannot come up with that scorecard. You just cannot if you're dispassionately looking at this fight. I think one of the problems with boxing that some other sports don't have is that in boxing we tend to give the favorite two runs before they bat in the first inning. Right? The underdog somehow starts out down 2-0. It would be like watching a baseball game where they tell you, you know, the Houston Astros are ahead 2 nothing. Let's start the game, right? Or a football game where they tell you, you know, Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots are up 7 nothing. Let's now go to the coin flip, right? To me, the 116-111 cards are embarrassing. They don't reflect reality. Now, in the comment section to this video, let's recognize that this is an interactive format. If you saw the fight and if you thought it was 116-111, tell us why. Tell us the rounds that you gave Mikey Garcia. Now, the fight I saw was a different one. In the fight I saw, and I believe these guys only fought once, Jesse Vargas gets out to a big lead, right? Jesse Vargas, after four rounds, in my opinion, is either up three rounds to one or four rounds to none, right? Vargas has a lead going into the fifth round. Now understand, Vargas is fighting a guy who kept running into Errol Spence's jab, right? Mikey Garcia has a lot going for him. He's a master technician. I thought he would beat Errol Spence. I didn't realize Errol Spence had the back foot that he did. Well, here, Jesse Vargas has more information than Errol Spence did because Jesse Vargas has had the opportunity to watch the Errol Spence fight. 
right? Whereas Errol Spence entered the ring without having seen Mikey Garcia lose professionally. Here you had bigger, dare I say faster, Jesse Vargas with a lead, right? With a lead, knowing that Mikey Garcia had a problem dealing with length and understand Vargas is the bigger man here dealing with length jabs on a back foot so at the start of the fifth round if you believe you're dealing with a fighter who is highly skilled understands in fact, understood before he hopped in the ring with Mikey Garcia, understood when he was in camp that an effective back foot game behind a jab with movement like Errol Spence showed against Mikey Garcia was effective against Mikey Garcia. One might have expected Jesse Vargas with a two or four round lead going into the fifth round to force Mikey Garcia to come get him. To have to walk into his jab. Understand, the dynamic's different if Vargas is behind. But here you would think Vargas would know he's ahead. So if you're ahead, the smaller man who doesn't have quick feet. You're not fighting Manny Pacquiao. You're not fighting Sean Porter. Right? Mikey Garcia likes to drive in third gear in the ring. He's not quickly closing gaps. Rather, he saunters over to you. You noticed he wasn't able to get close to Spence. One would have thought that Jesse Vargas would have realized that Mikey wanted him in the pocket. Right? Mikey's a master technician. Understand? While Mikey doesn't move fast, Mikey has a hair trigger left hook, right? The D Clan fight. I believe Mikey ends that fight with a left hook knockout. He has a hair trigger left hook. He has a quick, straight right hand, and it's short, right? That's the key with Mikey. His shots are short. He has a hair trigger right hand, but he needs to touch you a little bit with his left before he throws it. Had Jesse Vargas had the skills to set up a back foot and to force Mikey to get through a jab like Errol Spence had, like Larry Holmes had his entire career, like Tyson Fury has right let's remember Tyson Fury knocked down twice by Deontay Wilder in their first fight still gets a draw he's that far ahead he's four rounds ahead otherwise that's according to the judges <laughs> right guys with back foot games we take it for granted who have jabs who can dictate the pace of the fight against a slower-footed opponent would have beaten Mikey Garcia. The fight wouldn't have been competitive. You're out to a fast lead. Right? A fast lead. You're up by two rounds. Let's be conservative here. Let's say it's 3-1 after 4. Jesse Vargas at that point would have thought, okay, let me dance, let me pepper this guy with my reach, with my jab, with my size. Let me force this guy to eat a lot of jabs in the remaining eight rounds. If some judge is going to see him not land anything big, chasing me around the ring while he's getting hit with jabs, Jabs that I can follow up with right hands on. 
right? Then I'm going to dare the judges to take this fight from me. Well, it's easier said than done, folks. By the way, Vitaly Klitschko in fights. Guy with a big punch. KO puncher Vitaly Klitschko in fights. When he jumped out to a lead and he understood that you were having a problem with his length, he would just hit you with jabs. Understand, one of the secrets to being successful in boxing is being able to win the slow rounds. If you can win rounds where you're not in the pocket, winging punches, getting hit, doing a lot of dodging, if you can win rounds by being outside, forcing the other guy into your jab, moving, forcing the other guy to miss you, forcing a guy like Mikey Garcia, who is smaller, to have to reach for you, the bigger man. And understand, if you know how to jab and you're outside, the guy's going to have a hard time hitting your body. He's going to have a hard time finding your body. Really good jabbers. Guys with a lot of foot movement. Don't just lean back when they're relatively close to you to make sure you have to reach that extra distance to get you. But the guys who can dance are so far away from you that they'll only lean forward to jab you. Right? They're so far away that when you throw your punches, they don't even have to put a hand up. Your punch is going to miss them naturally. Well, Jesse Vargas did not have that skill set. Right? Vargas can move. Vargas can jab. He was an Errol Spence. He wasn't Larry Holmes. He wasn't Tyson Fury. He didn't have the kind of movement and jab that could close the door on the fight. So what happens in the fifth round? Now keep in mind, Mikey Garcia and Sergio Mora repeatedly reminds the viewer of it throughout the fight. Mikey Garcia has a very quick straight right hand. So he likes to throw a jab that's really a distraction, right? The jab is just to tie you up a little bit. You see the jab coming, you're trying to parry the jab, and then, of course, Mikey comes in with the quick right hand. But understand, you have to be close enough to Mikey for Mikey to hit you with it. You have to be around the pocket. Now, Errol Spence, big puncher. Understand, Errol Spence's decision to jab Mikey Garcia was unusual for Spence. Spence is a short-range hooker. Spence likes to come in and mix it up with you. You saw the Sean Porter fight that Spence had after the Mikey Garcia fight. Right now, understand, Sean Porter's different than Mikey Garcia. Mikey didn't have the foot speed to run up to Errol Spence. And Mikey likes to stand relatively straight up compared to Sean Porter, right? Porter's a guy who bends at the waist. Porter's a guy who comes in low. Porter's a guy who will move his head. So Errol Spence wasn't able to keep Porter at the end of a jab because Porter's game, like Joe Fraser's game, was meant to duck the jab, right? Was meant to come find Errol Spence, Porter could move with his construct. Mikey Garcia, not so much. Right? Garcia, in my opinion, clear first ballot Hall of Famer. Full disclosure, Garcia is one of my favorite fighters. But understand, Jesse Vargas had a clear opportunity here to close the door in the middle rounds on the fight. Instead, He's around the pocket. It's even worse than that. Mikey starts to look like he's stalking Jesse. Right? Now, understand. Guys who have a good jab, who understand the back foot, 
understand how to circle you so the stalking doesn't look like the shorter man walking you down. They also understand how to use the shorter man's aggression against him. Right? Floyd Mayweather, hair trigger, left hook. For the stalker, Diego Corrales. It's one of the best performances I've seen by a fighter. Right? Mayweather, the entire fight, has Morales walking into left hooks. The entire fight. That's a left hook fest. Now here's Jesse Vargas with the lead. Vargas doesn't even have to be bold enough to plant his feet to throw a left hook. All he has to do is stick and move. He has the reach. Fifth round happens. Mikey's walking him down. Just as Sergio Mora said, Mikey Garcia, who has a very quick right hand, throws a left jab. Jesse reaches for it. Mikey comes over. Straight right hand. Right? Straight right hand drops Jesse. So, let's say you had the fight. Three rounds to one going into the fifth. Let's say the knockdown ties the fight for you. Right? Let's say going into the second half of the fight, you're thinking, okay, this fight is tied. You would have thought that Jesse Vargas would have, at that point, at least moved away a little bit. Rather than try to mix it up with Mikey, who you know is a puncher, you know he's a KO machine. All you have to do is look at his record. Right? Online here, you have Mikey sparring with um, middleweights. Right? Ali Setback, a YouTuber, spends a lot of time in the Garcia camp. Right? Robert Garcia, Mikey's brother, is one of boxing's elite trainers. So, of course, you have more footage on Garcia fighters than you do a lot of other fighters in camp here on YouTube. So you'll notice Mikey Garcia at different times will hop in the ring with middleweights and stuff like that. He'll hold his own. You know he has a punch. So you keep waiting for Jesse Vargas to make size matter. Understand, making size matter doesn't necessarily mean being on your front foot trying to throw the guy around. Right? Against a shorter guy who needs to be close to you, who's already lost to Errol Spence's back foot game, who you know you can hit with jabs, who you know likes to fight straight up, doesn't really bounce that much at the waist. What is Jesse doing making this an in-the-pocket fight? Shouldn't the taller fighter have said, hey, my pocket's actually bigger than your pocket. Shouldn't he have been outside, moving his upper body, and jabbing? Let me say this too. Jesse Vargas is an excellent body puncher. No question about it. Right? I thought he beat Adrian Broner. I thought if you count the body shots, that fight's not close. But understand the moment here. Mikey Garcia has a quick left hook and a quick straight right hand. He's also a puncher. He's also four inches shorter than you. Something like that. Right? Four inches shorter than you. Coming inside and deciding to throw body shots instead of a jab married with movement just open the door to Mikey Garcia countering your body shots. It brought you closer to Mikey Garcia. Right? Understand the moment. If you're the mover, you know, Ali, a guy who operated behind a jab and movement, rarely threw body shots. Rarely. Because he understood if you're close enough to the guy, the guy's a puncher and the guy's awake. In other words, this isn't the Deontay Wilder Fury rematch. Where, you know, Fury batters Deontay. So when he knocks Deontay down with a body shot, by that point, you thought, well, wow, Deontay looks battered. 
<laughs> the body, you know, if Mikey Garcia were battered like Deontay Wilder, okay, then I'd understand Jesse Vargas coming inside with body shots. But that can't be your game plan when he's already knocked you down, you felt his power, you know he's a puncher, and you know he wants you in the pocket, and you know we had a problem with Errol Spence's back foot game. So Mikey goes on a run the second half of the fight, wins several rounds. I thought Mikey wins the fight. I thought the fight was close. An argument can be made the difference in the fight was the knockdown, right? Jesse comes back a little bit toward the end of the fight. But make no mistake about this. Vargas left this fight on the table, right? Perhaps Garcia, who's excellent at picking opponents most of the time, he made a mistake with Errol Spence, but usually Mikey comes in and you can tell he's prepared for his opponent. Maybe Mikey realized that Jesse Vargas, while bigger than him, didn't have the jab and the back foot game to reproduce Errol Spence's performance. Maybe Mikey understood that even when he was behind after four rounds, Jesse wasn't going to be able to stay away from the pocket because that's just not Jesse's game. Right? I'm just telling you, some huge punchers, Lennox Lewis against David Tua, right? Some huge punchers against shorter guys with big punches themselves, relied on their back foot, relied on their jabs, right? Lennox Lewis understood. I don't want to come in here trading shots with David Tua. I'm going to soften him up. I'm going to jab him up, right? George Foreman, big fighter, much bigger than Sonny Liston, right? Size-wise, big fighter, fought many smaller guys. George Foreman, a guy with murderous hooks, huge power, right? One of the hardest hitters I've ever seen, two-handed. George Foreman had one of boxing's better jabs. Why Jesse Vargas didn't get on his back foot? I'm just telling you, if Larry Holmes was up on you 3-1, he would have been on his back foot, you would have had to go through his jab to get to him if you were a smaller guy. Right? Mikey Garcia, because he's coming up from smaller weights where his size was the norm, right? He hasn't developed the upper body movement of, let's say, someone like Joe Fraser, who would bob and weave his head, right? Mike Tyson who would come in like this, because Tyson knew he couldn't come in standing straight, allowing you to hit him, at least young Tyson, before he runs into Buster Douglas. Right? Sean Porter doesn't just walk in. Porter knows. He has to bob and weave and stuff like that. When the bigger man gets a lead on a smaller man who's not a bob and weaver, especially in a fight right after that smaller man has lost to a guy on his back foot who has him walking into a jab. Right? To me, when the bigger man doesn't show us the back foot, establish the jab. Force Mikey to get through the jab. Neutralize Mikey's power by dictating the rhythm, not allowing him to touch you with the left hand to set up that right hand. When a bigger man doesn't do those things, he's making a mistake. I'm guessing Jesse Vargas knows this fight wasn't a 116-111 fight. This fight was razor close. And in a razor close fight, I'm sure Jesse today knows he shouldn't have been close enough to Mikey Garcia to get dropped. He shouldn't have been targeting Mikey Garcia's body in round seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
right? Garcia, Garcia is 100% at that point, right? Against a big man like this, you should be riddling him upstairs. When you start to bust up his face and he gets desperate and he's hurt, then you can go to the body. Anyway, that's how I saw it. Just understand, if Vargas fights Garcia again, right, I'm just telling you this first fight was close. Any rematch would be interesting. Notice, too, that after this fight, Garcia called out another shorter fighter, Manny Pacquiao. Right? Garcia wants to take on someone his size. Right? I believe he understands. And I know Garcia beat Robert Easter in the past. Garcia's beaten taller fighters in the past. But I think Garcia now posts Errol Spence. And I know he called out Spence. I don't think he wants any part of Spence again. Some things, some call outs in boxing are political. But I think Garcia understands that he's better off with a guy who needs to enter the pocket. Right? A guy who there's film on, the Marquez fights, on a counterpuncher, timing Manny Pacquiao. He's better off against that kind of opponent than he is, let's say, a tall guy who can keep him outside with a jab and who could use his length against him and who isn't going to be silly enough to be bending over like Jesse Vargas was reaching for his body. You almost got the feeling that Jesse Vargas hasn't watched the Razor Ruddick-Lennox Lewis fight where Razor Ruddick reaches for Lennox Lewis's body early and of course Lewis just times it so that's when he hits Ruddick after Ruddick has foolishly against Lennox Lewis come inside the pocket and left his head open right Mikey Garcia lived for those moments against Jesse Vargas he made the most of them I thought he won the fight I thought it was a close fight I thought Vargas misplayed it after jumping out to a two three or four round lead after the first four rounds that's how I saw it let me hear from you I'd love to get your take on that fight. Thanks for stopping by.